lost without you. That's either a phrase said by A, a child to their mother, B, a man to his wife, or C, an actual adult American human to their smartphone. According to the C <laughs> Foundation, it would be C. Of the 85% of adults in America who have smartphones, or have cell phones, and the 35% who have regular phones have smartphones. I'm so sorry, this microphone screwed me up. All right. 85% of adults in America have cell phones, and 35% have smartphones, and 25% of those 35% have reported that they have been unable to function in some capacity because they didn't have their phone. And that would equate to over 50 million adults in America who, if you take a small piece of metal out of their hand, can't function. This is really sad. Today I'm going to be talking about the different ways that smartphones have impacted our lives and how they're not changing us for the better. Think about how we socialize. How often do you go out in public and see a group of teenagers not looking at each other but looking at their phones? <coughs> they may be looking at the same Twitter feed, but they're definitely not making eye contact. They may be hearing the same news, but they're not hearing it from each other. How often, instead of looking at someone and talking to them, are you checking your email? How often are you updating your Facebook status instead of having a conversation? Let's think about the last time you actually went into a bank instead of making an online transaction. It's kind of crazy now. Before, about 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been like this. Humans are meant to be social. We're meant to make human interactions. But now we make cyber interactions. We're not really talking to each other. We need to take back control. Instead of hearing, get your phone off the table, let's go back and hear and get your elbows off the table. I know that happened to me this morning. <laughs> let's think about a game called phone stacking. It was created by people that were a little too addicted to their phones and owned up to it. They decided that when they went out to a restaurant, they would put their phones face down on the table. And the first person to pick up their phone because they just couldn't resist that urge would have to pay the rest of the bill. <laughs> if they didn't pick up their phones, they'd put it evenly like they normally would. And it might be a monetary bribe on themselves, but it actually solves a problem. They force themselves to look at each other, talk to each other, instead of missing the moment. How often do we miss the moment because we're too busy taking a picture of it, or updating a status, or making a tweet about it? It's really important that we look at each other, and we experience each other. Even when we're on our own, smartphones are impacting us. Let's think about how we sleep. <coughs> People nowadays are sleeping a little bit poorer, and let's think about why. The Mayo Clinic did a study on why people have poor sleeping conditions, and part of it has to do with phones. Instead of reading a book to fall asleep, or doing a crossword puzzle, or reading a magazine, or thinking about what they're going to do tomorrow, people are going on their phones. Instead of writing a story to themselves, or talking to someone before they fall asleep, they're looking at Facebook, they're looking at Twitter. And it's actually helping them to fall asleep, and they're calming down, and they're relieving their stress of the day but they're also messing with their brain chemicals. The chemical in your brain, melatonin, is released when you're about to fall asleep, and it makes you go into a deeper slumber. And you lose this deep slumber because of light, and this light comes from your phone. And when your phone is more than 14 inches close to your face, then less than 14 inches up to your face, then melatonin doesn't get released because the light from your phone is distracting you, and it's distracting your brain. And your brain doesn't understand that you're going to bed now. Because sometimes we really just need to disconnect. So how do we change that? We take back our rest. We take back the fact that instead of going on our phones, instead of looking at Instagram before we go to bed, we just think. We should just lie in bed and relax. And this will actually help our brain chemistry, which is a re really weird thing to think about. And it doesn't just pertain to sleep. It also pertains to boredom in general. How often, instead of going and just sitting and looking at what's around us, we check our email or we look at the news on our phones. I know that the other day I was playing a game on my phone instead of just sitting there, and my dad asked me, is that seriously what you're doing? You're pretending to be a penguin sliding on its belly through an iceberg? Really? And it made me wonder, what could I be doing with my time other than pretending to be a penguin sliding on my belly through an iceberg? I could be thinking of a story. I could be coming up with a really good concept for my next media presentation. I could be reading a book. Who would have thought? <laughs> and how do we remember information that we read in books? Think of the deja vu. We all are familiar with deja vu and the phenomenon of feeling like you've experienced something before. But how about presque vu? Presque vu is the tip of the tongue phenomenon. 
that phenomenon when you just know that you know something, but what is it that you know? When it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't come up with it. Press debut. Right now, we're clenching our press debut with phones because we have every any fact <coughs> and all information at the tip of our fingertips. And it's actually hurting the way that we remember. We got ourselves in the habit of trying to figure out what that one thing is. What is it? Who was that? When did that happen? And we, instead of actually sitting there and thinking about it, and pondering it, and trying to come up with that, and then quenching our press debut, we just take out our phones and we Google it. The other day, my mom and I were having an argument about Roger and Hammerstein's Cinderella, and who played the fairy godmother. And I was so sure it was Whoopi Goldberg, and she was so sure it was Whitney Houston. And it was Whitney Houston, and I found that out because I pulled out my phone and I Googled it. But wouldn't it have been better to think about when I was five years old watching it on VHS? Wouldn't it have been better to get myself in the habit of actually trying to remember things? A study by Lamosti shows that we're actually getting ourselves in the habit of not needing to remember because we don't have to, because we have phones at our disposal. We have the internet, we have databases, we have everything we ever need to know at our fingertips, so why ever remember it? It's actually really dangerous. People say, why should I learn how to spell that if I have spell check? Or, why should I have a grammar database in my head if it's online? And what we really need to realize is that it's important to know things. It's not important to Google them. It's really dangerous when we get ourselves in the habit of playing into the illusion of being social instead of actually being social, of updating a Facebook status or adding a friend on Facebook, but not actually meeting them, or not actually telling someone what happened in your life instead of expecting them to see it online. We need to get ourselves back in that habit of being real people and really interacting. We can't rely on our phones because 50 million people wouldn't be able to without their phones. And we really need to man up and be people again. A study recently showed that 150 times is how many times a person checks their phone a day. 150 moments spent pulling out your phone and looking at anything, whether it be checking for a text message or just looking at the time or putting something in your calendar. But when was the last time that 150 vital things happened on your phone? I would doubt any time. And if that doesn't alarm you or that doesn't pertain to you, think about this. Another study showed that the average adult spends 13 hours a week checking email, deleting email, sorting email, writing emails, 13 hours in your week. As it's been said tonight, the moments that we have are precious. We don't have unlimited hours in this world. So I spend 13 of them every week 52 weeks a year, all years of your life, checking your email. We have precious moments. How are you spending them? Thanks.